Hello, Penguin Orts, I'm the Betty Penguin, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. We had some rather amusing comments on the last video. A lot of people seeming to get genuinely worried about the temporarily heightened upload schedule, uh, which was just because I had a fair bit of free time during the semester break, but uh, I don't have that much free time anymore, so yeah, don't get used to it. But we should still be able to have uh, an Endurance episode out every week or so. So, what are we doing today? Well, it is time for us to finally start building our nemesis colony. If you recall in the previous episode, or a few previous episodes actually, uh, I've been describing how we're going to use this colony to mine resources and refine them into parts we can then use to build rockets off world. We can also then ship resources that we've mined back to solitude and essentially not have to worry about funds for the rest of our playthrough. So, this is the first module that we're going to be sending and this is a mining installation. So with the way that uh, USI works, we need six different input resources in order to actually build everything we're going to need to build. We need metallic ore, substrate, rare metals, minerals, exotic minerals, and we need silicates. Uh, but we realize that we can actually, instead of uh, using silicates, use spodamine and refine that into silicon because Nemesis doesn't have any silicates on it. Um, but rare metals are far more important. So, uh, yeah, it turns out we don't need to import silicon. Uh, the process to refine spodamine into silicon is actually pretty pretty efficient so yeah we're actually going to be able to produce it uh, on Nemesis so it's going to be pretty nice but this first uh, mining installation here is going to be mining metallic ore so what we need to do is just set that down in a particularly high concentration uh, area of Nemesis and then we'll just set it mining and due to the logistics system of USI it means that we can actually put the resources that it mines into a planetary stockpile and then if we have a logistics module on our base with a quartermaster in it then they can pull resources out of that stockpile at a small cost uh, although I will actually send a rover to the colony as well. I think it's a little bit overpowered just to be able to magically transport resources like that. So I'm going to make sure I have a rover so there is an actual explanation as to how the resources are all getting transported to the base. But you see here we're just uh, reusing our first stage. Well, not reusing it, landing it at least. And uh, sort of throughout this episode and the next few episodes as we use this launch system more and more, uh, the Albatross 15, uh, we're going to get it closer and closer to the Space Center. So this was sort of a first attempt at a boost backburn uh, to see if we could uh, get it a bit closer to the Space Center and I'll refine that further and further to the point where we almost land it on the launch pad, um, but that will take a fair few launches because yeah, well we need a mining installation for all of these different resources and most of them are located in vastly different areas of Nemesis, uh, so we can't really mine multiple resources in the same location. Um, so yeah, this whole episode is pretty much just launch modules. You see that our re-entry here uh, didn't go quite as well. We lost a couple of engines. Um, so on the next one we're going to pack a little bit more fuel for our boost back burn, or our re-entry burn at least, uh, for this second stage here. So heading on back into orbit, we're going to get our trans-nemesis injection burn and get heading out to that uh, rather terrifying looking moon of ours. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're going to use this base for as well as just providing us with a pretty much unlimited source of funds. It also sort of um, allows us to do something pretty pretty cool. A lot of you have been saying to me, Beardy, we want to see a slower than light mission to Valentine, our neighboring star system. We want to see you use fusion rockets or something to get there first, you know. And my problem with that until recently has mainly just been that if I get something heading on a tra trajectory to go to Valentine. Um, it will take such a long time to get there that we'd have researched warp technology by the time we get there. Or it would just cost such an insane amount of funds uh, I wouldn't actually be able to do it. It wouldn't be feasible. But with the base uh, giving us all the funds we need and also giving us an off-world launching platform, there is actually an option. What we can do is use our colony on Nemesis to construct massive solar arrays because solar power around Archangel is understandably very overpowered. So if we construct huge great big solar arrays um, or giant mirrors because uh, there is actually you know, as part of KSB Interstellar there are actually these giant focusing mirrors that you can use um, to redirect sunlight and we're going to use those to essentially 
harvest power and then beam it and create a beamed microwave power network. I'm not sure if I'm going to use microwaves because Kerbal Space Program Interstellar, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a very complicated mod. It always has been. Um, but most of my knowledge comes from Scott Manley's old KSP Interstellar series and it's been updated a lot since then. You can beam power in the X-ray range and infrared now. So I'll have to do a lot of reading up on that. It took a long time to uh, read up on USI and you know get this colonization effort going. So I'm going to have to read up on, uh, on KSP Interstellar and its latest updates to get this working. But if, once we have a network of these um, in orbit around Nemesis, we can launch them from the surface and you build them off world they won't cost anything so um, we don't have to worry about how we transport these huge solar arrays into space because we're building them in space uh, then we can get a space probe and all it needs to have is a receiver on it and a plasma engine and fuel that's it it doesn't need to have a huge great big fusion reactor um, and we can essentially put it to its maximum amount of thrust just by increasing the amount of solar arrays until we've got an abundance of beamed power and then we can essentially launch this thing. I think my estimates of the amount of delta V it would have would be about 280 kilometers a second which would get us to Valentine uh, within 10 years which I think is a relatively short time frame. So that is something to look forward to in a future episode. And you see there we finally landed uh, and we've been extracting our metallic ore and now that's going into the planetary stockpile. So uh, now we're just going to start skipping through these launches really rather quickly. Uh, this next one is our substrate mining installation. Uh, and yeah, as I said, we're going to skip through all of these now. Uh, we did land the second stage there a little bit better this time as we uh, included a bit more fuel for its re-entry burn. But yeah, uh, this whole episode is essentially launching these mining installations to the various different parts of Nemesis uh, so that we can, you know, have an abundance of resources. You see, we've got far more drills on each of these than we actually needed it. Like, I had an almost fully reusable launch vehicle that could launch 100 tons to orbit of Nemesis. So I was like, you know what, let's just make it so I'm never going to have to launch these again. Just mine more resources than we could possibly ever need. Because um, I wasn't entirely sure just how... Um how much uh, of each of these resources we're actually going to be using. So my approach here was just, yeah, just just mine loads of them and just make a standardized mining um, sort of base thing. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know what to call this thing. Um, and yeah, and just essentially just drop that into the various different biomes and mine all the different resources that we need. You see that uh, there's a fair bit of substrate on Nemesis. It's a fairly um, abundant thing. Uh, the most abundant... Um, materials on Nemesis are actually rare metals, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, so that means we can export those back to Solitude, because rare metals and exotic minerals, you can't find those back on Solitude, which is why they're worth such an insane amount of money. As I said uh, in the last episode, one shipment of those, two million funds in one go. So uh, yeah, funds really not going to be a problem. You can see that these mining installations are actually powered by nuclear reactors. You might wonder um, why they're not powered by solar power. That's mainly just because these drills use such an insane amount of energy. We would not have batteries big enough to last it through the night on Nemesis. So we need to use a nuclear reactor. And also, um, using a large nuclear reactor, it's not going to be need to be refueled for, I think it was 380 years. Uh, so I, th <laughs> I think this works out just fine. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really matter. It would be way, way... Uh, larger if we had to use solar power and it just wouldn't be feasible. It would be fine during the daytime but then they wouldn't work during the night um, so yeah it's much lighter just to include a large nuclear reactor. I oh, would ignore the Kerbals you see in the bottom right there. There was a bit of a weird glitch um, where for some reason even though I removed the Kerbals from the logistics module that we have on this that we need so that you can actually send resources into the planetary stockpile um, it still showed them as being in the bottom right even though they're not on the vessel. It was a little bit weird. Uh, I fixed it on the next launch as you see here and the subsequent launches just by launching from the launch pad. Launching from the VAB seemed to mess things up a little bit yeah and show that there were kerbals in the craft when there weren't any kerbals on board which was a little bit strange but uh, yeah anyway so this next mining installation is our rare metal and minerals so yeah this is the one well no there are actually two mining installations but um this is the first installation that's actually going to be mining multiple resources at once because the uh yeah the resources are distributed uh, all over nemesis but we are 
trying to uh, get most of our mining installations within about 100 kilometers of each other. So they're all roughly in the same area, just to make it, you know, a little bit more believable that a rover could uh, could travel to them. I don't know if it reduces the cost of pulling them out of the planetary stockpile if your nearby base is, is close. I don't think it really makes a difference. You could probably have one on the other side of the planet uh, or moon and it wouldn't really matter. But, you know, I like to keep things uh, a little bit more realistic and, you know, a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, so, yeah, one thing I didn't realize um, until now was that the resource concentrations are entirely tied to the biomes that you're landing in. So here it showed on the orbital map that there were a bunch of rare metals and minerals here but uh, it actually turns out no we're not landing in the highlands biome and that's what the orbital map was actually trying to tell us. It's not a particularly accurate way of finding resources. I really should have included a narrowband scanner on this thing so I could see the resource concentrations below the uh, the vessel. But, uh, ah, well, you see, we land here and still with plenty of fuel. I included a, a lot of Delta V on these things, uh, although they don't have a particularly high thrust to weight ratio. They get the job done. And yeah, there isn't actually <laughs> any, uh, there aren't actually any rare metals or minerals here. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to uh, this mountain range over here, get up to a little bit of higher ground into that highlands biome and see if we can find ourselves some rare metals. Metals. Uh, it's going to be a bit more of a challenge to find some flat ground because, yeah, I think the mountain height to um, radius of the body ratio on Nemesis is higher than any other body uh, in the entirety of the solar system. It really does have some crazy high mountains. I think some of them get up to almost 20 kilometers. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very spiky world. That's why I would have preferred to make the colony on uh, Guardian but uh, it just didn't have the right resources and I really didn't want to have to have mining installations on both of the moons and uh, have to ship them from one to the other. So you had a bit of a hard landing there as we run out of fuel and we did slide down the hill a little bit but uh, after a little while we slowed down enough to deploy our drills and get mining rare metals and minerals. And I do realize here that the mineral concentration really isn't that high because the rare metal concentration is so high, half of a uh, mining installation's worth of drills is more than enough. It's, we're gonna, we're barely actually going to need many uh, any rare metals at all. We're going to be exporting most of them. Uh, but yeah, we're going to need some more minerals because uh, we use minerals to make chemicals which are a vital uh, ingredient in making both material kits and specialized parts. It's the only uh, resource that we need in both production chains because those are the two different resources if you remember that we need to manufacture rockets. We need specialized parts and material kits and yeah minerals are quite important uh, so we're going to need to mine some more of them but uh, this mining installation is for exotic minerals so this is another pretty precious resource um, these are combined with rare metals to get refined exotics uh, and then you combine those with silicon to make your specialized parts. Uh, you need a lot more material kits than you need um, specialized parts but um, yeah the, the specialized parts are a lot more of a pain to produce. They use rarer materials um, and they yeah they're a little bit more awkward um, to actually manufacture because you need a pretty steady supply of chemicals as just to actually have the process <laughs> going to in order to combine the silicon and the refined exotics uh, but you see here yeah we've pretty much got this launch process down to a T now um, so yeah just turning ourselves around and there we go landing ourselves and you know, I believe this is a steep slopes biome um, we're getting pretty good at finding uh, flat ground now you see we're getting a lot of data for our accelerometers on Nemesis because we're smashing so many of these third stages into the surface here um, so I should probably go to those accelerometers at some point and transmit the science that would probably be a wise idea but I thought this was quite a nice shot here just landing you see uh, solitude there in the background deploying our drills to start extracting those exotic minerals and uh, we just get ourselves a nice little view as we uh, turn the camera around Get a nice view of uh, the plains and mountains of Nemesis with uh, Solitude and Archangel in the background. So, this last mining installation is a little bit different. It has to use different drills because we're going to be mining spodamine instead of silicates and refining that into silicon. So we're having to use drills from KSB and Stella which are a little bit glitchy as you see it. They've got the drilling particle effect going even though they're not drilling which is a little weird, um, but this mining installation is also going to be mining minerals because the, the KSP interstellar drills are a little bit overpowered, like they're a little bit broken. I didn't want to use them um, for you know for all of the resources here because I wanted to be you know not to 
didn't want to use any exploits essentially. Uh, but they are almost as effective as the USI drills. But the USI drills can only mine one resource at a time or three different resources at you know a third speed for each. Whereas these mine almost as fast, but they mine every single resource that is present in that location. So I could have also stuck a rare metals container tank on here and also got even more rare metals. But first of all, we're going to have way more rare metals mining from our other installation than we'll ever need. Uh, and B, yeah, it was just a little bit broken, so I didn't really want to use it. But uh, this installation is going to be mining spodamine and also going to be mining minerals. So uh, we'll have more than enough minerals to supply our, our chemical needs uh, for our colony when we build that in a future episode. Um, and yeah, so what we're doing here, you, since spodamine isn't actually one of the USI resources, you can't transport it using its logistics system. So we're going to have to refine the spodamine into silicon on site, and that's what that massive ISRU there is there to do. And I did make a little bit of a mistake here. Um, it turns out that the ISRUs don't operate at peak efficiency unless you actually have an engineer on the spacecraft, so in all my testing uh, it was operating at 100% efficiency uh, but then when I actually land it here it's only going to be operating at 10% efficiency so we're not going to be producing anywhere near enough silicon so in the future we're going to have to expand this mining installation just uh, send up some more ISRU so that we can actually refine all the spodamine that we're mining. You see I found out here um, that we're really not producing uh, anywhere near enough silicon to satisfy our future colony's needs. Uh, we're mining more than enough spodamine, but uh, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, do that at a future time. And thankfully, the container tanks we're using actually have a jettison function, so all the excess uh, aluminium, and I think we get lithium, two different types, two different isotopes of lithium, uh, and liquid oxygen as byproducts of this silicon production process, uh, which is a little bit interesting. It's quite similar to Andy Weir's book, The uh, Artemis. I was almost said The Martian, no, Artemis, about the moon colony. Uh, um, there's a very similar process actually where they mine um, the lunar regolith and they refine it into aluminium and a byproduct of that is actually uh, oxygen and silicon. Though the events of that book do mean that silicon then eventually becomes the uh, focus of that. But uh, anyway, we'll fix this and get our colony up and running in a future episode. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I've been the Beardy Penguin and I'll see you all next time.